This month, a poll of 3,000 Americans showed 49% were not that worried about global warming. That's up from 39% in 2007, when Al Gore's book and documentary, An Inconvenient Truth, was the hot topic in the climate change argument. I recently sat down with the former vice president and asked him about the environmental debate as we head into a brand new decade. All around the world, there is a rising movement of people determined to solve this crisis. How do you count, though, for in the United States, while there is actually more scientific agreement, there seems to be less political agreement? Some of the largest carbon polluters have been vigorous and, and try to convince people, as the tobacco industry did years ago on the link between smoking cigarettes and lung disease, that there really isn't a link uh, between global warming pollution and global warming. But the power of that kind of lobbying and advertising does have an impact. You know, some of the models say it takes X number of years, even if you stopped pouring stuff into the atmosphere now, how many years it would take for the environment to recover. Is it too late to do it? No, and I actually start the book with a discussion of that question. Some of the consequences are going to play out because we've already increased temperature one degree and another degree is stored up in the oceans. But the truly catastrophic effects that these scientists have been telling us we've got to, to stop can still be avoided. There's an economic argument to be made. E even uh, naysayers understand that it's dangerous for the United States of America could, to continue growing more and more dependent every day on foreign oil controlled by sovereign governments, many of which are not friendly. The second point, even a naysayer understands the value of creating millions of good new jobs right here in the United States that can't be uh, outsourced. In fact, the climate crisis, the economic crisis, and the security crisis all have a common thread running through them. And that common thread is our ridiculous over-dependence on carbon-based fuels. If you grab that thread and pull it, all three of these crises begin to unravel, and you hold in your hand the answer, which is to switch to renewable forms of energy. Do you miss politics? There are some things I miss and some things I don't. When I see problems uh, like the climate crisis where the Senate is taking it off, I sometimes wish I could go down to the Senate and speak from the desk there and just hold forth. But there are a lot of things I don't miss. And I've moved on with my life and I am enjoying uh, spending my time and energy uh, in an effort that feels like it's worth giving it everything I've got. And uh, that, there's a fulfillment in that. Do you think that you've ended up in the right place as a consequence of the odd journey their life has taken? <laughs> you know, uh, Winston Churchill was once told by a friend after he lost an election early in his career that it was a blessing in disguise, and he said, damn good disguise. <laughs> <laughs> Al Gore's new book is called Our Choice, A Plan to Solve the Climate Crisis. You can also see a poetic Al Gore do a very special reading from his new book on our website. That's earlyshow.cbsnews.com.